Hi everyone, welcome to today's tutorial and in this video, I will be covering and how you can recreate this box template for a soap. Now it's really easy to do and let's see how that's done. The first thing I'm going to do is that I'll be opening up a new document. Over here, I'll be making sure that my dimensions is in pixels format and I'll be choosing this A4 size document which is 210 millimeters in width and the height is 297 millimeters and I will rename the document to be soap packaging and I'll click on create all right so I'll be using this as my reference and I'll be recreating the same thing same thing over here. So what I'm going to do first is that I'll rename my layer 1 to template and also I'll make sure that my smart guides has been activated. So I'll go to this views panel and activate the smart guides. So the reason why I'm activating the smart guides as well because it's going to help me a lot when I'm going to recreate the soap packaging okay so as you can see here I'll be making the template first and then later on add the other elements such as the images and the ingredients etc okay so I'll zoom out a little bit first and I'll use a rectangle tool and what I'm gonna do is that I just want to make a rectangle which is half of our main document like this so this will be like the side portion the side packaging as well uh, sorry this one is gonna come on this side like that and I'll actually just make another copy over here and I'm going to reduce its size to half like this and I'm going to make another document which is going to be the back side of our packaging which is going to be the same size as this front one right so what I'm going to do is I'll just make one document of the same size like this and bring it onto the side like that. Now zoom out. Okay. And let's see, there's another one right there. So, I'll just go ahead and make a copy of this rectangle onto this side as well. So, in order to do that, I'll be clicking on all to make a copy and bringing it on the side like that. So, we've got this. Now, what we have to do is that make these top portions first and then I can go ahead and just make a mirror image copy onto the other side as well. So I'll make start with the easiest one which is this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'll click on this rectangle tool and make a rectangle like this and okay. So I'll make another square right on top of our rectangle like about like this size and I'll choose a direct selection tool click on this anchor point right here click on shift and the arrow uh, and the left arrow key and bring it inwards till we get this kind of a shape since we've got that I'll select these two come to this pathfinder panel right here which is right behind this layers panel and I'll click on unite 
So doing that, this entire shape becomes into one. So now for the next shape, which is this one. So I'll be using the pen tool now and I'll make this kind of a shape and I'll go ahead and also close this. Use the rectangle tool again and make another rectangle like this. And I'm going to go ahead and choose these two as well. Come back here to this Pathfinder panel and go ahead and also unite this again. So now for this one as well. So using the pen tool again, I'm going to make it like this. Use the rectangle tool and make a square like this. Select these two and unite them again. All right. So we've got these three. Now the only thing that's left to do is to make this one right here. Right. So what I'm going to do is that I'll use the pen tool again and go ahead and make this kind of a shape. I'll be making the half portion for now like this. Once that's made, I can make a mirror image out of this shape onto the other side as well. So I'll right click on this, go to transform and click on reflect. So I'll be making sure that the in the axis portion, this vertical option has been has been activated and click on copy. Okay, wait. So I'll select this again, right click, transform, reflect and copy. So once that's made, I can just go ahead and drag this onto the other side like this. Select these two and unite them again. Now that we've got our basic folds on the top, so all I need to do is make a mirror image of all these four flaps onto the downward, onto the bottom portion as well. So in order to do that, I'll select all of these shapes by clicking on shift. Right click, transform and go to reflect and this time I'll be choosing the horizontal one and click on copy. So once the copy is made, I can just drag all of them down like that. Alright, so there you go. We successfully made our template. But before I lock this layer, I'm going to make slight changes on this rectangle as well. So in order to do that, I'll be using the direct selection tool. Select this anchor point, click on shift and the down arrow key and bring it down like this. And similarly with the other anchor point as well. Select this anchor point, click on shift and the up arrow key and bring it upwards like that. So now that we've got our basic template shape, I can now go ahead and also lock my layer so that when I add the color or the contents, I do not accidentally delete anything. But before I make the contents, I'm going to add my colors first. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a gradient in this, something similar to over here. So as you can see, there's a gradient between a brown and an orange. So, I'll select this first, come over here to this gradient tool right here and over here in this layers in the gradient slider, by default it's from white to black. So let's change the colors first. So over here in this white one, I'll be choosing this orange color and on the black one, I'll be choosing this brown color like this. and. I'll be changing the angle like this over here. 
So this orange portion comes on the top and the brown one comes at the bottom like that. Once that's made, I can go ahead, select these three and add the same gradient like that. And okay, so I'm just going to change. Well, okay, this looks fine to me. I'm just going to change the stroke color to white. And I'm going to change the stroke weight to 3. So that it's easier for you to see as well. And these white lines will act, will be the portion where our folds are made. So similarly, I'm going to add another gradient on this, on the front portion as well. So I'll choose a rectangle tool and add my rectangle like that and the gradient comes in as well. I'm going to just use this. Okay. So these top portions, these flaps on the top and at the bottom as well, will have the shade of this orange like this. And I'm now going to go ahead and block my layer. So once that's done, I'll create a new layer. And I'll rename layer 2 to be Contents. So in this Contents, I'll add this cocoa shape or this cocoa beans, this cocoa beans image. So I'll click, so to open and so to open the image, I'll be clicking on Ctrl plus O and I'll be choosing the second one which says Coco to PNG. You can actually easily get these kind, these kind of an image up on Google really easily. So I'm going to crop this as well because I do not require this black band which says vector stock and just crop it accordingly like this and click on apply and then we can just use the same drag the image onto my packaging like that and make it bigger like this so what i'm going to do is that i'm making a slight change in this one so I'm going to add what's it called a drop shadow behind this image so that it gives a very 3D look to it. Something what I've done in this one as well, right? So I'll select this image, go to effect, stylize and click on drop shadow. So in the opacity, I will be changing the opacity to 95% and I'll let the color be black. And if you click on OK, you can see that this drop shadow effect comes right behind our image and it gives a very 3D look and feel to it as well. So I'll select this again and I'm going to add a smaller version of the image onto the back side as well. So I'll click on Alt and come over here and drag my image like this. And I'm going to also scale it down by clicking on Shift and Alt and like so once that's done, I can now go ahead and add like add the ingredients which is used on our in our soap onto the back side as well. So I'll be clicking on Control plus O again and type in ingredients of soap. Again, you can easily get these kind of images up on Google, and once that's once you've downloaded it and saved it, you can open it and then adjust it accordingly in case if you have to crop it any other way, you can like this, click on apply and like that. I'm just going to resize this a little so that it comes on top like that. I'll unlock my layer so that I want to blend these ingredients with the background as well. So I'll go to this transparency panel and over here in this blending mode, I'll click on multiply like this. And now I'm also going to add the barcode and this icon which says 
to be thrown in the dustbins dustbin after it's used this packaging right so click on control plus o again and i'll choose this barcode so i'm going to drag this over here zoom on this a little get that over here zoom like just rescale this like this i'll just go ahead and blend this to multiply and the last thing i want to add is the throw in the dustbin icon so control plus o and throw in the dustbin icon click on open going to drag this over here as well going to resize this this and also change the transparency like the blending mode to multiply like that once that's made i can go ahead and lock my template and i'll also lock my contents as well i'm going to zoom out a little like this so now i'm going to add the name of my soap right here so in order to do that i'll be clicking on create new layer and rename layer 3 to be text come over here to this type tool click on my document and i'll give it a name of cocoa soap yeah cocoa soap that so i'm going to change the fill from black to dark brown and change the font size to 72 and also change the font style from iriart pro to chaparral pro like this and bring it here onto my to the middle of my document like that so once that's done i'm now going to add one last text over here which says the net weight of a soap so the net weight is around like this Right. So I'll click on the type tool and type in net weight or just type in any type of weight as you like or just I'm just going to give it a random number I'll just type in like 40 no maybe 20 grams So I'll select this and also just change the font size to 36 bring it over here and also just change the font color to brown as well okay I'm just going to make one last change in these in the color of these bottom flaps as well so I'll uh I lock my text layer as well and lock my template one select these layouts come back to the gradient tool like this and i'm going to choose the same gradient which i had chosen like this and just change you know it i'm just going to change opacity something like this so that it looks more uniform and it looks a lot better so it looks as if it's blended nicely and also change the stroke weight to white and increase the stroke weight to 3 like this i want to do the same thing on the top as well make it 3 and also change the stroke weight to white and there you go 
we now successfully made our cocoa soap packaging so the only thing that's left to do is to save a document so in order to do that i'll be going to file I'm going on save as so by default my file name is going to be the same as my document name which is soap packaging and my save as type is going to be adobe illustrator so I highly recommend that we save a file in this format so that in case if i want to make any further changes i can easily access my ai file and we click on save and we click on okay so there you go our packaging has now been successfully been saved as an ai file so i hope you enjoyed this video and you found this video to be useful and you can make such kind of soap packaging as well you can play around with the colors give it your own name or probably even use any type of logo as you like so there you go so thank you for watching and Stay tuned for more.